सो गाइज फाइनली वी आर स्टार्टिंग द कोर मशीन लर्निंग एंड डेटा साइंस कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ ए डब्ल्यू एस ओके एंड वी आर स्टार्टिंग द फर्स्ट ट्यूटोरियल ऑन सेज मेकर लेट्स गो एंड सी वट इज दिस सेज मेकर ऑल अबाउट इफ यू गो इन साइड द ए डब्ल्यू एस कंसोल एंड इफ यू क्लिक ऑन सर्विसेज यू विल सी समथिंग लाइक मशीन लर्निंग इन साइड मशीन लर्निंग यू विल सी मेनी कॉम्पोनेंट्स एंड most important component that we are going to learn today is amazon sage maker okay so here you can see build train and deploy machine learning models okay this is one of the oldest and most used component for data science point of view so let's see what all we are going to learn in this session guys first of all we are going to learn what is sage maker basics of that then what are the various features that sage maker offers okay not from only sage maker point of view but in aws from data science and machine learning point of view what all important things and most used things are being offered okay as you can see here there are lot of features that is being offered amazon poly and panorama and omics kind of thing but not everything is being used that much okay so we will see what important features sage maker offers and we use then there are two things in sage maker one is called notebook instance and other is called studio okay so we will see what is the difference and how they are you know uh, used for different purposes after that we will see how to launch a studio demo and how to launch a notebook instance okay and then i am going to uh, show you how you can be careful about the charges so that you don't end up paying any money to the amazon unnecessarily okay so guys what what i want to show you here is what is sage maker first of all okay so as you could see in the console itself it says that it is you know fully managed um, it is for building training and deploying machine learning models right build train and deploy machine learning models but as you know right this is a cloud offering so it will be giving lot of things to us i mean it will make our life easy so how sage maker makes a data scientist's life easy let's try to see with some of the features i have listed here features not everything but some of the very important features and that we use most of the times okay so um, as i told you prepare build train and deploy four important stages if we take of a machine learning pipeline right let's see some of the features that you will use mostly and it's important to know first feature is ground truth so what ground truth does is i will give you one simple example here suppose you want to do a sentiment analysis on twitter okay so you collect data this is your tweet 1 this is your tweet 2 this is your tweet 3 okay but you do not have normally a target column you want to you know do a classification where you want to say this is positive sentiment this is negative sentiment but normally you don't have this in real world so it's a big challenge for data scientists to create this labels okay and this is nothing but ground truth so what ground truth will do is it will enable you to create labels for your data that is one feature of it okay this one example i gave for test it can be a image based labels it can be different kind of labels okay so that is how ground truth help you to prepare data for your machine learning now what clarify does clarify is a tool that enables user to uh you know see how their data how their model is getting biased or how the data is behaving okay so it will detect bias and understand model predictions in a much better way that um, you and me cannot do you know that systematic level of analysis okay i will show you these things in upcoming sessions i am just trying to tell you what all important features you should be aware of okay data wrangler makes your life easy in aggregation uh, kind of sorting kind of filtering kind of joining so it it makes your life very easy in all those data preparation kind of activities okay now what is jump start in build phase coming to the build phase there is something called as a jump start jump start enables user who are not too technical to build their machine learning model suppose somebody who does not want to write code who is not too technical but they want to build their machine learning model by gui kind of interface okay so this jump start will enable them for discovery training and deployment of model using solution example some graphical user interface kind of thing okay what is this autopilot does autopilot suppose uh, you do not want to do lot of hard work in building your model okay so autopilot will do automatically create models and it will give you visibility what your model is doing what your data is saying so make your model uh, you can say building life easy 
okay and then aws gives you a lot of built-in algorithms built-in notebooks built-in algorithms which you can use uh, to train your model to build your model for example if you say i need xgboost so xgboost built-in algorithm with some good features is already there that you can use okay so you can also bring your own trained model your own docker container everything you can use so many nlp and vision algorithms you will find here NLP kind of algorithm or computer vision, latest algorithm you will find here. So that way it makes your life easy. Now let's see some things in the train services. So in train services, there is something known as experiments, guys. What experiments will do is it will enable you to track, visualize, and share model artifacts across team. So what this means is, you, for example, you can create a, uh, you know, experiment here. You can say, this is my data import. Next, you can say, this is my data cleaning. Next, you can say, this is my, you know, label, labeling. So this way, you can create an experiment and whatever your model artifacts gets generated, it can be shared, experiments can be shared among your teams, okay? Then comes managed training. What managed training does is, AWS will take care of your training, fully managed training it will do. It will allocate the resources. It will it will ensure that, you know, cheap resources are, are being used. So mostly they say that, you know, 90% of training cost they reduce if they fully manage your training services. Okay, then comes the distributed training. Suppose you have very, very large deep learning model, very, very large data set. So distributed training is one area which will enable you to train your model in a distributed kind of environment. All these things I'm giving you one, two liners knowingly guys, because you must understand what are the basics of these things, okay? There are many things, but I'm not covering. I'm just covering few things to give you an idea. Now, what is in deploy? In deploy, you can do various kinds of monitoring. Okay, so model monitoring will give you access to maintain accuracy of the deploy models if your model is underperforming. So it will enable you to have a look at that and take action on that. Then in, in deploy, various endpoints are facilitated by AWS, okay? So endpoints can be like multi-model endpoints or endpoints can be like uh, multi-container endpoints. So all of it are for different, different purposes for reducing cost by multiple models at per instance or however you want to do it, okay? So when we deploy the model, we can cover these things. Then the last inference. So you can have multiple kinds of inference. You can have real-time inference. If you have a steady traffic patterns, you can have a serverless inference for intermittent traffic patterns. So depending on what kind of traffic patterns you have for your model, right? Every time you don't want to use your model, right? Maybe somebody wants to use once in a week. Somebody wants to use daily. Somebody wants to keep it running 24 cross 7. Based on that, you can have different kind of inferences. Okay. So AWS supports that aspect as well. So as I told you in prepare, build, train and deploy, these are some of the things that is most used and you must be aware of that. Now let's go ahead and see some basic differences between notebook instance and notebook studio. I'm sorry, SageMaker Studio, okay? So here, what you have to understand is notebook instance is something which is very easy to launch, okay? Easy to build and launch. On the other hand, if you see Studio, it is also easy to launch, but there has to be some configuration done, okay? Some configs needed to launch, okay? Some configs needed. Now, this studio, you can treat this as complete IDE that you can use, integrated development environment. And this notebook instance, you can you can just treat it as, it will run inside your AWS console. Inside console, a Jupyter notebook will open and you can work on that notebook, okay? One important thing to note here, guys, your resources to notebook instance will get allocated by AWS itself at the moment you are launching or running the notebook, okay? So resource allocation will be taken care by AWS. So I can say here fully managed, okay? This is fully managed by AWS. You no need to do anything. That is where it is easy to launch and easy to work with. But most of the time we generally work in a team in a collaborative environment and we want a IDE kind of setup with GitLab in integration and many other things, right? GitHub integration, many other things. And here what will happen is you may need to manage few things by your own, okay? So some of the things you need to do self-management, fine? 
and that is where uh, though it provides kind of more features studio it is uh, heavy for the management purpose notebook instance is quick and on the go it will allocate resource and it will start working let me show you how these two things are different in the uh, management console okay a quick demo for these two things so if you open amazon sage maker right so i have clicked on sage maker now and it is opening so if you can see here in sage maker on the left hand side you will see studio and studio lab okay two things options are there and then here if you come see in ground truth i was showing you guys how to how you can label the jobs in ground truth labeling jobs labeling data set so this will help you to create you know more better data for your model synthetic data etc so first of all notebook instance i want to show you let's go to notebook instance this is a instance i launched but let me let me launch one more instance for demo purpose okay create notebook instance you can give any name my demo instance okay it will ask you what kind of instance you want to create so what kind of server it will attach in the background elastic inference and what kind of platform you want to create okay so there are various options you can go with lab 3 lab 3 is the latest let's go with lab 3 okay and then you can simply come here keep all the default option and say create notebook instance okay so if you see here notebook instance is pending so it will start in some time but let me let me start a previously built notebook okay so let me start this the first one which i created now will start in some time but this my not i had created some time back so let me create it now let me try to start it now so both are pending status so before that we can open it and see few things here this is your arn arn my arn means your amazon resource name or unique name with which amazon identifies this okay at the moment I created, it addressed 5 GB of EVS volume with my notebook. Okay. And then it, it attached this platform. Okay. If this pending becomes running, which is which is happening now, then you can start either Jupyter or Jupyter Lab and you can work with that like you work in your local Jupyter notebook. Okay. But there are few limitations with notebook here. It's not a fully managed you know full integrated environment kind of thing okay so there are many things which you need to be careful when you are sharing between your teams so suppose you are working on one notebook instance somebody else in your team is working on other notebook instance so when you share your work right then there has to be a uh, few things to be taken care of, which i will discuss later both these notebooks instances are starting let it start meanwhile i will show you uh, what setting you need to do to launch a studio okay so i will click on studio and if you can see here if you are doing it for the first time it will it will show you here create domain domain is nothing you can give any username there okay so i gave unfold data science and once you create domain it will tell you to create a user so just you can say default user i have created two default users okay this is my one default user this is my other default user so what two things you need to do guys you need to create a domain and you need to just go ahead with the default user okay and here this studio is launching this is amazon sage maker studio that i was telling you this is a ide kind of environment okay on the other hand if you see notebook instances this is not ide this is a simple jupyter notebook that you can work like you work in your local machine okay so it takes some time to start the first one i created now so it is taking i understand but second one should not take this much of time anyway let's wait and see so as you can see both the notebook instance have been started now and once it starts it will show like this in service and the meaning of in service is if i let's say train a model here now and if i use it for some purpose there is a ec2 instance that is supporting me in the background and i will be charged for that based on whatever service i'm using okay so be very careful on what you are doing when you have started a notebook instance okay i am i have launched the jupyter lab from there so a jupyter lab will open i mean jupyter notebook kind of environment and here you can see i had launched the studio itself right so studio has also started so as i was telling you studio will look like a ide this is the look of the studio and notebook instance will look like a normal jupyter notebook so if i go here and i can launch here so this is my first you know jupyter notebook i can write my python code here okay 
and then there are many things we can do but just to show you how to create and how to launch a lab studio and how to launch a Jupyter Notebook instance. Remember guys, always, if you launch this and keep it open studio, then there is no problem because nothing is running in background as of now. But if you keep a notebook instance open and leave it like that, that's a problem, okay? So go here and say stop and go here and say stop. Always make it a habit of stopping if you are not using it. Otherwise, you may be unnecessarily charged for that. So in our next video, we will see how we can use um, Jupyter instance and Studio Lab for doing Python experimentation and whatever features or whatever things we discussed here in various aspects. Some of these things are very, very important and I will try to cover some of these things in upcoming lectures, okay? And I'm also going to show you how you can deploy your model and create endpoints in the SageMaker kind of environment. Same code will run in Studio and Notebook instance both. There will not be any difference in the code. So please go ahead and press the like button, guys, if you're liking AWS series. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next video, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.